everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land Plays of Bounty Fights Get Rid Plus 28 wins in a row. Closing in on one month. Feels good, man. Okay, well, this is a win. <laughs> FPTESDZ9. Um, and look, I'll be the first to tell you. I would say, compared to the average streak um, at this point, we've had less scares than is typical. Um, we've had a lot of mom's knife runs, which is ballin'. We've had a lot, like, maybe even more Satanic Bible runs, which, I mean, I gotta be honest, I, you, you give me a choice of item, I prefer Mom's Knife. If you're holding me to the fire and asking me to tell you what item actually improves your chances of winning more, I think you can concoct a situation in which both of them uh, are are the preferred, uh, the preferred item, but I think probably Satanic Bible raises your chances of victory more than uh, than mom's knife but it's I mean we're talking about you know like a hundred versus 99.5 or something either way I mean I, I I will not apologize it's not my fault again the old NL can't come to the phone right now why he's dead old NL apologized for being lucky new NL recognizes that you know, everybody else that's got these long streaks on YouTube, everybody else is taking the advantages. I'm the only one that's like, ooh, uh, ooh, we took mom's knife too many times. I hope people don't hate me. Screw that, dude. We're we're bringing a more powerful energy into into 2021, where we are unapologetic for positive things that happen to us outside of our control, or even things that happen within our control, for that matter. We're, we're, we're living our best life here and no longer uh, self-sabotaging because we're more comfortable uh, being in a position where uh, we're familiar with loss, you know? We're going to get real uncomfortable with how much we're winning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you got me. You got me, you son of a gun. What's weird is like our HP is so good uh, and, and our everything's great. Like rate of fire is great, damage is great. Um, for for the start of the run that it actually feels like we're weak because we have like late game defense But definitely a little bit shy of late game damage. I'm just begging you to give me a bomb So we're not okay. That'll work. That'll work. I just wish to not be stuck with bozo who did the dub We all know he did the dub. I don't know why you're being weird about it Clown pewter probably got no games as we're aware um, bozo like is is an item that if we don't get anything after re-rolling if we only get crappy active items we don't care about we're not too disappointed mm, that's absolutely horrible and that's pretty bad as well but at least no <laughs> we got it <laughs> okay 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 i thought we could swap off of doctor's remote while we were using it um, no, we will, we, no, 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 this, this is not what you do. This, um, I hate to say it, but it's not what you do. You gotta stick with Satanic Bible. You, you got a little injection of enjoyment there. Hold on one second. Alright. Um. Keep it moving here. Still going through the, the doctor saga where, like, you know, we had our... Appointment set for this morning, and then nobody called, and then, you know, Kate called the doctor, and the doctor went, I called, but nobody picked up. Probably because you called somebody else who didn't have an appointment, but anyway. You know what's weird about being uh, Canadian? And this is not, like, a major complaint. Um, but we always have to, there, there's so much, um... I was gonna, I'm just gonna use the word I was gonna use. You know, there's so much, even, like, self-admitted propaganda about... Uh, our healthcare system. Like, I even get tweets. Hey, I'm, a, I'm a YouTube gamer. Not really a politics guy. But I get tweets from people that are like, you know, I heard that, you know, in your healthcare system, you gotta wait, like, in the emergency room for 12 hours to see a doctor. Or, like, you know, oh, if you get diagnosed with, like, a terminal illness, sorry, but, you know, you know we got no space for you. I'm not saying, like, things like that don't happen, but I feel like. As, as a Canadian, lately, I feel like I have a weird responsibility to never complain uh, about my healthcare uh, service because even the slightest complaints can sometimes be uh, twisted as being like it's an indictment of the healthcare service, you know? 
If my doctor and I have a communications mix-up that causes us to not uh, be able to connect on an appointment, as you know, is it the system's fault? I don't think so. Could just, I mean, maybe we made a mistake. I don't want to go off on the doctor too much. Um, but it could just be, you know, one individual making a mistake. You know, a surgeon can leave a scalpel inside of you, whether you're getting the surgery, you know, covered under your government health insurance plan or you're paying 25 grand out of pocket. Human error is human error, you know? That's why I can't wait for the robots, dude. Hello? Did you manage to get connected? <clears throat> oh, no. Okay, okay. I'll pause it. I'll pause it. And I'm back. It's been about 42 seconds. The, uh... I mean, this is now fitting with what I was saying earlier. <laughs> it's... it's it seems uh, not hypocritical, but it's, it's uh, I don't know, just a funny juxtaposition that uh, apparently the doctor called the wrong number and then was like, eh, don't worry about it. Your next appointment's in like two weeks anyway. You know, it, it, if the doctor says uh, we don't need to talk, then uh, I mean, it's not really up to me. If my wife and the doctor say that they don't need to talk, then as far as I'm concerned, uh, my input is uh, secondary. <laughs> Let's not pick this up yet. We want a big deal with the devil. I'm gonna... That one went through a few stages in my mind. So, at first I was like, well, why would I take this if I could just get, um... Deals with the angel by not taking it to begin with? Then I was like, I mean, I should have looked it up first, but we can look it up now. Isn't there some kind of, uh, impact that you get by having duality? Like, this duality gives you the choice of rooms, which is really not worth anything for us. Like, because we're just going to take devil deals. But one sec. Duality, Isaac. Whenever an angel or devil deal appears, the other one will also spawn. So it's really... Okay, so I, I thought we got an extra bonus. But uh, apparently not. Regardless, though, you know, the the reason that we took this is actually, like, this is advanced level Isaac, I'm not afraid to say it. The reason we took this, and it's, it's gonna sound weird, so you gotta go with me. The reason we took an item that gives us greater access to angel deals is actually to ensure that we have greater access to devil deals. Hold up, what's he, what's he talking about? Well, if we don't take duality, we don't have, uh... Well, no, now I'm like, wait, we don't have Deal with the Devil precedent, but Duality also overrides Deal with the Devil precedent to give us Deal with the Devil and Deal with the Angel. But if we, you gotta look at the opposite. If we didn't take Duality, we would have a better chance of getting deals with the Angel in the future, and unfortunately, we don't want deals with the Angel because they tend to be... Um, even if they're not worse universally, I think we could all agree they tend to be worse in terms of the frequency of great offensive items, and our defense is already so sorted that we really need offensive items above all else. We also have so much HP that, you know, the big cost of getting items from the deal with the devil affects us disproportionately less than it would the average run because we're gonna essentially have infinite HP as long as we don't throw a bunch of it away, you know, on bad damage. So, uh, I, I think my analysis holds out here. I know, I mean, it's like a, it's a very counterintuitive sort of play to take something that gives you angel access to get more devil access, but... Honestly, I feel like, I feel like my brain's working at, uh, at capacity here, in a, in a good way. I feel like we're making sound Isaac plays. Now, admittedly, are, do we have to make the soundest plays in Isaac history in order to compete today? No, probably not. <laughs> do get a pretty good setup regardless. Which is regardless of the amount of pogs in the gourd. But the gourd is pogged. The gourd is pogged. Anyway, today is, uh, Wednesday. As mentioned in the last video, in between admonishing the Amish population, <laughs> who should be admonished if they're watching the videos. I mean, hey, you're not supposed to be using the YouTubes. I did watch a documentary on... Right? So, obviously, by watching this 40-minute documentary, I've got a pretty good awareness of this complicated population, but I watched a, a documentary on a group of uh, Mennonites who live in South America, and one of them had like an illicit 
cell phone. I, I think I've said this exact thing before, but I was, I was like, man, I don't know if he should be sure, because he doesn't want the population to know he's using the cell phone. But he's getting filmed for a documentary, and I was like, what's this guy thinking? Then I realized nobody else in the community is allowed to use the internet. So if he got discovered, they would also be admitting themselves that they broke the rules of the community. So really, he's like super protected. <laughs> it's, uh, he, he's a, a, a dang genius. I hadn't even considered it. You know, he's, he's thought of everything. But I was laughing because he was like, I guess we'll just use this right away. It's good timing to get something that's not good at all. Um, but uh, he was like, you know, it, since I discovered the internet, my world has opened up in a huge way like i'm so i'm filled with such a sense of curiosity every day for all this information that i can discover and the only thing they showed him doing with his internet was watching like youtube music videos for country music songs but you know how like the classic music video on youtube is like fan-made music video at least is like lincoln park mixed with dragon ball z this was like you know famous country music songs interspersed with um Shots of people driving tractors through like fields of wheat and stuff like that. <laughs> it's like I didn't even realize that AMV is actually like, you know, it could be anime music video. It could also be Amish music video. And you know, again, you might think that I'm like, oh, look at these yokels, you know, watching videos of, you know, tractors going through fields. Honestly, I think, you know, it's not for me, obviously, but simultaneously, you know, if that's what you like, that's, you could be spending. Your, your time on the internet in a lot worse ways, for sure. You know, it's not what I want to do with my free time, but at least you're not, you know, replying to every single one of Ryan Johnson's tweets with, like, you know, hey, screw you, buddy. They'll get there, though. That's, that's like, stage two of the internet. You get bored with watching amazing things, and then you're like, you know what would really hit the spot right now? Something that made me extremely mad. <laughs> I'm tired of smiling. Okay, you gotta eat this bomb, please. Um, thank you, Ghost Pepper. We are, I wouldn't say we're suffering uh, on, a, on a damage standpoint as we speak, but I would say we, we're very much on the lookout um, for a damage upgrade. It probably won't really happen here um, because the best if we don't get a deal with the devil, we're like, okay, if it's if it's not magic mush or like, you know, Jesus juice, you know, there's there's a very small pool of of items here that actually um meaningfully improve your damage from a boss. But you know, the deal with the devil would be nice. And I'll tell you, if if you're watching this and you're like, you got duality, go to the angel deal. You're 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 uh you know, same kind of people that were like, oh Jacob Markstrom had a Sloppy game, game one. We're gonna go back to let, let, let's let Thatcher Demko have a chance. No, you gotta. You, you're, that was a great item, by the way. I really appreciate that. You know, we gotta we gotta do a statistical analysis. We got our best. You, you ride uh, with the, with the hot goalie that got you there. That's what we're doing here too. We don't need deal with the angel items now. Admittedly, if the deal with the angel somehow provided us with Godhead or Sacred Heart, then we'd be stoked. But uh, for now, much more important for us that we get those high percentage uh, deal with the devil, you know, Pact, Mark, Abaddon. Work tw we got two more guppy items to turn us into guppy. We could also just pick up Epic Fetus, I suppose. So this, I mean, if you ever wanted to run to be like, I'm going to fall asleep right now. <laughs> this is probably the ideal choice. You, uh, you are going to miss a win, but I'm gonna tell you the banter engines are, like, empty, dude. Like, wh what's my life been for, th for this week? A lot of work. A lot of hockey. A little baby prep. That's, that's pretty much it. I've been eating a lot of bread. That's, that's... <laughs> That's where we're at, banter-wise. I've been getting back into bread. I go through fits and spurts. It's it like it's uh, an oscilloscope, you know, my, my interest in bread. I always like bread. 
I never go through a period where I'm like, bread doesn't taste good. Bread always tastes good. And I've espoused, I, I think it was on Tuesday's stream, and our backlog is small enough right now that I, you know, it was the stream on the Tuesday that just passed. Um, I believe I said that, you know, if I could have access, if I only could have access to like one kind of world cuisine, just in terms of like, in terms of what tastes the best, I don't know how to give an answer on that, okay? Because that's it's very subjective that, you know, that, that's how you end up getting these situations where you're like, you're, you're getting into fights, right? But in terms of like what my brain and my body seem to like the most, I really think there's something going on in my, in my gut and my evolutionary or genealogical history, I should say, that is like, you love Northern European cuisine. I like soft and hard breads, cheeses, you know, cured meats, which admittedly are not very good for you. Um, fish, and and especially like pickled fish as well. Oh man, or you know, I know that sounds gross maybe, but I mean it's good. Pickled herring, dude? It's a strong flavor, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a strong flavor. So I've been eating, like when I grew up, I again, a lot of my stories about food are, are rooted in the fact that, as a child, I was a very picky eater. Um, like, for me, I don't think there's anything more emblematic of being a picky eater, and I apologize if you're in this anecdote and you don't like it. But, what, what percentage of people out there, as kids or even now, like bread, but only like white bread, and only like white bread without the crust? Like, that's the, the highest degree of picky eating to me, and I, I lived it. It's like there's 70 kinds of bread out there. They all taste, I'm not going to say almost exactly the same, but, you know, they're all different genres of, or different uh, artists in the same genre. Let me put it that way. But you're like, no, I, you know, <laughs> I like rap music, but I only like Kendrick Lamar, and I only like the songs where he doesn't swear. You know, that's that's basically where you're at there, but... So, so as a child, I, I only ate white bread, and I thought it was like a, an awakening for myself when I started eating whole wheat bread. I was like, look at my, my horizons have broadened so much now. And I know people are going to be like, they don't taste the same. Look, they don't taste exactly the same, but they're pretty close. It's a, Part of it is a palate thing. I remember being like a kid and, you know... When you're eating white bread, which is, you know, you can get, don't get me wrong, I got a lot of respect for white bread. What do I like about white bread? Oh my god, first off, it's a little sweet, for sure. It uh, toasts insanely well. It's like the platonic ideal for toast for a lot of people. You know, in the right situation, I think it makes for a great sandwich. It depends what kind of sandwich you're looking for. Um, but, you know, when I only ate white bread, eating whole wheat bread was like, are you kidding me? It has like a... It has like a chew, it has like a bitterness. It's not really bitter, but it has a bitterness. It has almost like a little sourness. It's like I'm eating real food instead of something that Wonder Bread pushed out of a Play-Doh mold. But I, you know, I always enjoy the taste of bread. But sometimes I'm like, eh, I shouldn't be eating this because it's like, you know. Like, not good for you in any way, shape, or form, but it still is kind of like a staple. I mean, I feel like all the staples are kind of... You know, in, in a modern parlance, not uh, objectively good for you. You know, like, like white rice is not good for you. Pasta is not good for you. Potatoes, I mean, again, it's the difference. Are they good for you in an evolutionary sense or like in a survival situation? Absolutely. Are they good for you in a, if you have uh, abundance? No, probably not. So I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers here, but... But I've started eating it again anyway, because I'm like, it's good. <laughs> and I got this, uh, I mean, I, I'm blessed, you know, Kate got me a, a loaf of sourdough the other day, and it's fantastic and delicious, but I also got this Russian black bread, which is a variation on rye bread. Oh, man. It's complex. It's like I, I'm becoming like a wine guy for bread. I'm reviewing these, these store-bought supermarket baked loaves of like... <laughs> Russian black bread, and I'm like, the chew was majestic. Like, it's got me, I'm the, I'm the guy who's like reading the, I'm eating a food while reading about that food on Wikipedia. Are we on depths? We're on depths one, we can go in here. 
And I was like, man, the his did you know? And this is again, let, let's not get too into this because it's a contentious issue. Did you know one of the uh, well, first off for context? Do you know what the Great Schism is? It's uh, it speaks to the separation of the eastern and we uh, western branches of the uh, Catholic Church in like the year 10,040 or whatever. There was a lot of reasons for the Great Schism. Um, most of them seem, and again, this is where maybe I'm going to get myself into a little bit of trouble because I don't know if there's still people watching this that'll be a little bit, they're like, ah, the wounds are still fresh from the Great Schism even though it happened, you know, a thousand years ago. But um, a lot of those reasons, I'll just say it, they seem kind of petty by... Um, by modern standards, but none of those, none of them seem more petty than the orthodox sect of the uh, Catholic Church being like, you can take the Eucharist with uh, brown bread that's like leavened, and then the uh, Western sect being like, under no circumstances, uh, we're gonna kill you. We, we, we can no longer get along. If you use whole wheat or rye bread to take the Eucharist, you're dead to me. I just, like, I mean... <laughs> again, I'm not the kind of... I'm not equipped to answer these sorts of questions. Um, but in my head, I'm like... Cooler heads couldn't prevail back in the back in the 11th century. Like, was there was there a guy at the council that was like... Guys, 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 we agree on 98% of what's in this book. We're really gonna get into, we're gonna, we're gonna get a, a religious divorce over, well, among other things, bread? You have your, you know, brown bread, we'll have our white bread, it's not that big of a, I think that, like, you, that could have been, like, they needed an arbitrator, that's all I'm saying. I feel like, cause you know, I'm I'm not a, an arbitrator or a mediator or a lawyer or anything, but I feel like a mediator could have been like, hey, if we can, you know, compromise on the bread thing, maybe we could start to bring it together. Actually, like, I don't even know if we want this, but let's take it anyway. That that could have been the start of uh, working the whole thing out. Can you admit that it would be okay if they included a different type of grain in the bread they used to take the Eucharist? Alright, well if you agree to that, then can you agree that, you know, there should be some limits to papal authority and... You know, and I, I think, honestly, if, if you you put me in that room... You, you give me two days, I've mended the schism. That's just my take. And, I, you know, maybe that's a level of hubris that is unbecoming of me, but... Or maybe, I, maybe after two days, I'd be like, I didn't get it. The bread thing was like a big deal. <laughs> well, we just missed Boss Rush. So we definitely should have kept the world card. But did not. Bro. It's a great run, don't get me wrong. I'm just, you know... I mean, there is no you know here. It's just like, it's just gonna take us a minute. Okay, yeah, just throw a key away for no reason. No, sorry, we're, we're giving a key to the key gods. Ace of Hearts, not interested. There's options. Basically, this is paying 15 cents for one item. I don't think it's good in every situation. I think in our situation with a lot of money, it's pretty good. I will definitely use Unorbital. Or I'll use uh, potato peeler once for unorbital. We don't. Do, do we know it is Ace of Hearts? We know that it's Ace of Hearts. Okay. Don't want the trinkets. Uh, like Mom's key is pretty good, but I, I, I'm kind of fishing for something a little bit, a little bit deeper. I guess a little bit more useful. We we definitely are gonna keep a Satanic Bible. So all no matter how good a space bar item is, it's not worth enough for us to get rid of a Satanic Bible right now. Um, Unless it gives us something immediate. Now, Battery Baby is, is actually pretty good as well. But we just don't really need it. I don't think it's worth 15 cents to... I don't think it's worth our last item slot to smelt that trinket. Let me let me leave it at that. That's a better way to think about it. The Fool and Strength. Okay. We didn't even check our item room yet. How about that? 
Okay, um, we don't charge shots, so I think number two is pretty much just like, it doesn't really do much for us. You know what's gonna be nice about this run? And that, it's not like we're putting in a rush job. This one, is, it is done, <laughs> for the record. We're just going to our curse room and then moving on, but... Um, the cathedral is basically gonna be non-existent. We're just gonna, we're gonna bounce out, like, immediately. Well, not bounce out, but we're gonna, you know, blow up every door. Guppy? No guppy. By the way, I, I don't I don't do this for, you know, extrinsic factors. I don't do this to uh, I don't say this to be rewarded, you know, I true uh, self-actualization comes from within, you know, I'm proud of myself for how we've been doing on the streak. However, can I just get a little just a small amount of props for the frequency or rather the infrequency that we've been using uh, pills on the last few runs? I didn't know that I would uh, that I would ever get to this point, but my my resolve has reached a very good level right now. You know we're we're doing uh, we're doing quite well with not getting ourselves into trouble, pharmaceutically speaking. So it's strength and death. Can I hit you with a very petty complaint? When the death card, you know, it, 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 it takes up space in your inventory, right? When you use it on a room and it doesn't kill all of the basic enemies, that's where I just find myself being like... Can we... I, it, it's so minor. I, I feel weird even mentioning it, but... I mean, I feel like that's buff city, right? I don't think it should kill... Again, stop me if this is too petty. <laughs> okay, I'm stopped, but... Um, no, I don't think it should kill bosses. When you use it on base... I know they're champions. We use it, every, every enemy's a champion when you're playing on hard mode. Um, when you're using it on basic enemies and they don't die, I'm just like, what, what went wrong there? What went wrong? Makes the card basically useless after, like, the, the early game. Anyway, it's pretty minor. <laughs> Excuse me. It is wild to think that it's, uh, September. I saw Malf make a tweet the other day, and it was like, I'm stoked that sweater weather is here. First off, is is a, a mood that I can relate to a great deal. Um, I think we're gonna take both, and this is gonna sound super weird, but we want to lose HP with experimental treatment. I can't believe it kind of worked. The idea being we'd get a huge stat gain and also permanent Polaroid invincibility. So that's that's wild that that worked for us. But I think this is for the best. Um, I, you know, and it, it's not even like anti-summer. Like, I feel like every season unfairly gets sort of like a personality type associated with it. You know what I mean? Like, if you dislike summer, you're... I dislike fun. I don't like, you know... Kids being out of school, thus making it, you know, slightly more annoying to go to the grocery store. I don't like when my city is inundated by tourists just because it happens to be a, you know, beautiful city. You know, I don't want to be that guy. Although I have been in the past. We're working on it. Um, and then, like, you know, uh, you know, if you, if you like fall, oh, I'm not like other people. I'm moody and contemplative and, you know, the, oh, the falling of the leaves and the crisp weather and apple cider and pumpkin spice latte, you know? I don't think you can necessarily um, judge someone on, on their preference of the seasons. I think, to be honest, part of it depends on where you live. You know, when I... well, a large part of it. When I lived in Ontario, I did not like the summer very much. Because... I mean, it, don't get me wrong, I didn't like the winter that much either. But, the, you know, you get to relative extremes on the on the weather. You know, in the winter, it's like, you know, down to minus 30 sometimes and, you know, bitterly cold and 
you, you can't do anything and you're, you're cold even in layers inside of your house. Some people are into it. Some people just think they're into it because they've never experienced the other side of it. Then in the summer, it would get up to like over 30 degrees Celsius and, you know, in, insanely humid and tons of bugs and, you know, you get the idea. In Vancouver, actually, I, I like the summer uh, a great deal because it's, it's actually like great weather, usually pretty mild. And it's like one of the only times of the year we don't consistently get rain. I like the other seasons as well. But I, when I saw Malv's tweet, I was like, man. He, this guy's insane. It, it can't be sweater weather. It's only like July. Then I was like, oh no. <laughs> it is It is indeed almost autumn. We're like a month away from autumn. It's been a very strange year. I'm not sure if anybody else has had this realization. <laughs> I'm just saying, is Sonic still in the running for best picture? I don't think so. I, I think it's been pushed out. Surely, even though Tenet is not getting superlative reviews, it would probably be a little bit more likely to... Or what about that movie um, on Hulu? Where all drugs are legal for one... One day? That one seems like it could be an Oscar winner. I mean, I know when I heard about The Purge, I was like, you know what? This is a very smart idea. And... Um, Boy, I would love if this inspired some parodies of of a movie that I don't think had that much influence to begin with. But anyway, no, I, to be honest with you, I heard Palm Springs was good. So I, you know, again, I don't know what it's on in Canada, but I'll figure it out. Never probably is my expectation. I saw the Seth Rogen Pickle movie. An American pickle. I hesitate to give you my thoughts because my thoughts on it are kind of, um, you know, let's say that my thoughts are a little milk toast. I thought that the movie was mildly entertaining, but not all that good. Is that okay? Like, you know, and not every. I know it's 2020. Everything's got to be either like, you know, oh, I love this movie, I stand them, or like, oh, I hate this movie, abolish capitalism. But like. You know, I thought it was, like, not a waste of my time, but probably would not uh, ever be like, yeah, you gotta see it. But I will say, dude, I know, like, he gets... And I, it's not because he's from Vancouver, honestly. But I, I think uh, Seth Rogen, in my opinion, I'm not gonna say he gets a bad rap, but I think I like him more than the average person likes him. I understand the criticism of a <laughs> and like all of his movies are about you know they got some element of the same like narcotic uh, substance involved which doesn't interest me at all although I can you know laugh about it it's not like I'm like oh get over it do a movie about peyote or get out you know but uh, I always find like I, I feel like you know what I'm gonna say it I, I feel like Seth Rogen's a little bit underrated I feel like you know Someone like Zack Snyder gets judged, uh, I mean, admittedly, two different professions, I suppose, but someone like Zack Snyder gets judged on their best work constantly. No one's ever like, well, not no one, but people are always like, remember Dawn of the Dead, remember 300, you know, a lot of people are like, remember Watchmen, I actually think Watchmen is, the, the movie is pretty okay. Um, but for Seth Rogen, people aren't like, oh, remember 50-50, oh, remember, you know, knocked up everybody's like oh sausage party and the interview and uh, you know i'm like he's he's made some good like heartfelt stuff i mean even like the gross out stuff from the mid 2000s like knocked up is a good movie i i i mean I'd, i might even say as far as comedies go is a great movie i feel like people have a very very high standard with comedies Whenever you ask people, like, what's the last, you know, comedy you enjoyed? They'll always come out with something ridiculous. They'll be like, Groucho Marx's Duck Soup from 1938. I don't know. Recently, I very much enjoyed Charlie Chaplin's The the Great Dictator. I mean, like, you gotta... If you haven't laughed at, you know, a movie in the last ten years, then, you know... Honestly, I'm inclined to believe that you just don't like laughing that much. He's He's been in some good stuff. 
Also, you know, the other thing is that I hesitate to even bring it up, but like, he seems like a, when I see him in stuff and I hear what he, the things he's saying, he seems like a good guy. You know, he comes up in local Vancouver news now and then for for telling people to like, hey, uh, don't go spreading the virus around. You know, he gave a security announcements on the SkyTrain for a bit. Seems seems like a stand-up guy, in spite of his you know easy ability to be caricatured and. Uh, you know, that, that doesn't mean that I enjoy his work anymore, um, but, like, any, I mean, any more than I would if he was, you know, just like a, a person I had a neutral opinion of in population. But I'm just saying it does lead me to come to his defense a little bit more. If somebody was, if I like somebody's movies, but in their personal life and on social media, they're being a jerk all the time, I'd probably be like, yeah, screw that guy. I mean, at the same time, I'm still a big fan of, you know, Seven. <laughs> or the usual suspects, but, you know, yeah, don't, totally, screw that guy. When people are punching at Seth Rogen, I'm like, he's good, he's, he makes decent stuff, and also, he, anyway. For now, thanks for watching, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button, I'll set a great deal, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. See ya!